This is Lauren Bregitzer, and I'm going to demonstrate a quick and easy way to create a backward reverb in Ableton Live. First, I'm going to play the original unaffected clip. You can't control me. Now here's the same clip with the backward reverb added to it. You can't control me. So now to start at the beginning, I go to the session with the original clip. I'm going to double click on that clip so I can see it in the detail view. You can see and hear in the clip that the audio starts at the very beginning. You can't control me. In order to create a backward reverb, I need to have space at the beginning of the clip so I can have a ramped up space for the backward reverb to begin. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do that. To do this, I'm going to click and hold on the clip in the session view, and then while I'm holding down the mouse button, I'm going to press the tab button to jump into the arrange view. From the arrange view, I'm then going to drag that clip into a single track. Next, I'm going to select exactly one bar before the clip, and then drag that to the end of the clip that I dragged into the arrangement view. With the one bar of pre-roll and the dragged clip selected, I'm going to go to the edit window and select consolidate. This will create a single clip in the arrangement view that has one bar of silence before the original clip. Now I'm going to click and hold on this clip and press the tab key on my keyboard to drag it back into the session view. I'm going to right click so I can change the color of the clip. And now to keep things tidy, I'm going to tab back into the arrangement view and delete the original consolidated clip. Tabbing back into session view, you can now see that there's one bar of silence at the beginning of the sample before the actual audio begins. Next, I'm going to reverse the sample. This is super easy to do. Just go down to the clip detail view and reverse the clip with the reverse function, which is the button labeled Rev. Now when I play that clip, it'll play the audio of that clip backward. Now I'm going to select a reverb for this backward clip. I'm going to go to Live's Effects Browser and select the Reverb Audio Effect. I'm then going to click on the triangle to expand the presets and select the Medium Hall preset. From here, I'm going to drag it to the audio track with our backward clip. From here, you want to make sure that the wet and dry knob is set to 100% and that the quality is set to high. Now let's hear how it sounds. It sounds pretty good, but I want a longer reverb, so I'm going to increase the decay time to about three seconds. That's more like it. Now I'm going to need to print this effect as audio so I can then reverse it back again. Here's a very easy way to do that. I'm going to create a new audio track and rename it Reverse Verb Vocal. <sighs> now I can print this clip by recording it into a new clip on the new track, but here's an easier way. Now I can print this effect by recording it into a new clip on the new track, but here's an easier way. I'm going to select the original track with the backward audio and the reverb device on it. Then I'm going to go to the edit window and select Freeze Track. This will write all the audio and effects as temporary audio files on your hard drive so it's no longer processing the sound. Instead, it's reading them off your hard drive with the effects already written onto the audio. I can then option drag the frozen audio clip onto the new track, and now we have an audio clip of just the printed reverb on that backward sound. Now I'm going to select the original track and then unfreeze it from the edit window. I'm then going to press shift tab so I can go from the clip view to the device view and then turn off the reverb device. Now listen to the backward dry clip combined with the backward reverb clip. Now I'm going to tidy up my session by right clicking and renaming my printed reverb clip. I'll also change the color too. Now I'm going to reverse both these audio clips so they're playing forward again. I can do this by selecting each clip and pressing the reverse function of each one. Now let's hear how these two clips sound together. Control me. To further tidy things up, I'm going to select both these tracks and put them in a single group. This will allow me to play both clips at the same time with one launch button. I'm going to shift click to select both tracks, and then go to the edit drop down menu and select group tracks. I'm then going to click the unfold group button so that I have one track with both clips in different tracks launched with a single clip. You can't 
can't control me. If you want to adjust the levels, you can just unfold that group and then adjust the levels of each track inside that group. Let's keep things tidy by renaming our grouped track as vocals. Now in this group track, I have two clips, one dry and one with a reverb. You can't control me. You can't control me. Now when I launch these clips in a session, I need to make sure that I account for the one bar pre-roll of the reverb in backwards reverb track. So I need to launch it one bar earlier than I usually would. This is, of course, if you have the global quantization set to one bar. You can't control me. You can't control me. This is just with reverb. You can do the same thing with other time-based effects like delay, so practice and play with doing that. 